Hello everybody, welcome. Today I want to talk about PostScript. PostScript is a part of a very interesting moment in computer history, revolutionizing publishing. Basically, it's the beginning of desktop publishing, where it started being possible to create elaborate graphics uh, documents without relying on very expensive typesetters in multi-million dollar machines. Steve Jobs and Apple started this revolution with the Mac that had the, the user interface and the Apple user writer. Interestingly enough, you, the printer was more powerful than the Mac because it had to feed the printer data fast enough in order for you not to roll the paper too slowly through the printer and burn it, right? So, whereas the Apple Mac had, I think, 8 megahertz CPU, I think the laser writer had 12 or 16. And it also had more RAM. PDF is a direct descendant of PostScript. It began its life basically as unrolled PostScript without the for loops and so on. And for the test, I picked a machine that is very representative of this moment. It's running Next Next Step Operating System version 3.3. It's a kind of machine that it was already faster than uh, many printers, but in my case here, we are back to the basics. This computer has 60 megahertz and 128 megs of RAM, whereas my laser printer has 800 megahertz and 256 megs of RAM. Also, the operating system runs next, next step, as I just said, runs display PostScript, so basically all the rendering is based on PostScript. So if you look here, we have a next step running a HP PA processor, and the system was last built in 1999, Apple updated it until the late 90s. I picked a few interesting demos for you to see. So PostScript works as the printer executes the code sent by the computer, meaning that the computer is free to perform all the tasks. That's why the laser writer used to run on a local talk network where you could distribute the loads to, basically, many computers could print directly to the printer and go back to their tasks. The same thing happens here. Once you print, the computer is out of the way and the printer does all the job. However, since display PostScript is how the system displays data, it has a built-in PostScript processor that's part of the preview application that is still used in macOS. Let's quit the terminal now and go through the demos. First one. If I open here Omni, open Omni Write, I think, Open Write, cannot see properly the screen now. I can insert into the documents PostScript code, and we have a few samples here. So if I go here and insert, for example, random colors, I get this random colors bar that the printer will process. Now look at the interesting part. If I go here, print, and do preview, the colors in the bar, they don't match the documents because the random code was executed again by preview. And if I print these documents, it's also not going to look like this screen, which for me is super fascinating. I was going to think that this could be a way to authenticate documents. You know that if you had two copies alike, someone copied your document. That's quite cool. Another interesting thing, and taking a small detour here, let's look at the driver. PostScript has been standardized in the 80s, and many printers today are still compliant. So if we go here to um, 
printer management. Sorry, wrong place. Next apps. Print manager. Go to printers. You see, I have a Lexmark CS printer here, and of course, this series of printers didn't exist at the time. And if you go here at the settings, what I did was oh, I'll show the, uh, this to in the print box. Uh, let's pick any document here. If I go print, all I had to do was to comment the modern parts of the postscript descriptor file and all the options perfectly functional because what happens is next step sends the parameters to the printer when you issue a print command. Of course, it doesn't query back the printer model. So for example, let me see the trace. Yeah, so basically probably the biggest Lexmark print has five trays. So it shows here as having five trays where I have only the tray number one and the manual paper tray. Um, so you just cannot change it. Also account code and department code. Nowadays are free text fields in here. They are just not set, right? Uh, here resolution also this 1200 image quality, I think in my print will be 4800 uh, image quality mode. But the settings actually work, right? It goes through as parameters of the printer and the printer executes the next job based on the settings. Now, since we are here, let me cancel this. This is the source code of one of the demos. Let's open rectangle. And if you look here, we have this random number generator function and scrolling down there is a for loop generating the contents so if I double click this preview is going to execute the postscript code and every single time I open this document you get a different document since the computer is quite slow each time I get a different result. See, this one took quite a while to render. The funny thing is, once I print this, the printer is going to execute again the code. So since it's a random uh, function, the output is going to look different from that. And all the processing is done locally by the printer. So let me do that now. I'm just going to print this. And you see, I cannot preview the print because that would basically be re-executing the postscript code, right? But I'm going to do print here now, and my print is going to start uh, rolling soon. I think you can hear it. And I'll show the results to you in a bit. Now let's look at the next demo I, I separated for you. Uh, Right, let me close this out. Let's go to box. Let's look at this. Where are you? Box. All right, so this is basically a 3D box. And the code to draw this is actually quite long. I haven't gone through this code and actually don't know much about PostScript. But what you could do here is basically if you are printing, and all this it is, but for example, I saw code online where a person had written a barcode generator. So if you are printing millions and millions of barcodes, it could be better just have the printer process and create a barcode and you'll just send the parameters of that bar uh, barcode instead of processing this locally, right? And is this probably not, but if you think early to mid-90s, it will probably be the case, right, that you could save processing power by letting your printer do the work. I'm gonna 
take the paper out of the main tray and, and put in the in the manual tray and let's print this one. Thankfully, my printer print takes manual uh, the manual tray by default, so it's just gonna sphere one dot ps. It's also in the mathematical expressions folder. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, you see, this one is taking a while to load. The computer is, the 60 megahertz computer has to render this sphere, and the computations are quite interesting here. See, it's a lot of code that is running. So let's print this one out as well, and I will show you in the end. Ah! <gasps> 49 pages. I'm really curious to see what this is gonna. Ah, because I'm printing the, the, the code, not the. Oh, yeah, it's always the nature of PostScript. I had quite a few pages in the buffer, so the print still ejected five or six pages after I pressed the cancel button. That was very stupid. At least I got a bit of draft paper. Okay, now we have one page. And I suppose the printer will process it faster than uh, the computer. So we get fern.ps. I think this one is one that takes a while to run. Yeah, so this also gets the computer very busy. I don't know how many iterations of code we run. One hundred and fifty thousand iterations of this code. It's processing a matrix and it's probably not optimized for HP's SYMD instructions. I forgot the name now. Max instructions. Uh, and the computer is pretty slow now. Uh, so let's let it process. Oh, is it done? No, not yet. Uh, meanwhile, let's find another one before I forget. We have one more uh, to show you. <gasps> okay. <gasps> now I'm pushing this poor machine quite hard. Uh, let's go to next developer uh, let's go to examples I'll keep this real time so you see the struggle the computer is going through to process all this data those script and I wanted to show you the level two stars Another interesting thing about PostScript is that, well, the computer basically doesn't know how many pages the output is going to have. Oh, this here is done processing. So, what's going to happen is, this should cut in two pages because the way the computer tells the printer to go through the, the, the pixels, distance, and so on, it will just overflow, yeah? And I need to cancel the print again, so let's do this. And even though the OS is originally from 1993, I think, and my printer, I think the model was released in 2015 or 16, the driver works fine and you also get colors. And whenever you send PostScript data to the printer, it takes its sweet time to go through the code. Um, anyway, I will show you the result here and link down in the description below a few more interesting videos about PostScript in case you want to learn more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.